Hi, my name is Dr. Michael Batu, and today we're going to talk about consumption and saving functions. So what do we mean by the consumption function? The consumption function gives us the relationship between disposable income and consumption. Okay? So it's the relationship between desired consumption of all households to the several factors that determine it. Now, that determine it. So, formally, the consumption function is a function. It's a mathematical expression. Now, how does it look like? It looks like this. So it's given by, so I'm going to write here, mathematically, it's given by C is equal to C sub 0 plus B Y D. Now, what are these characters right here? So let me explain what these are. So this C right here, is our consumption expenditure. C sub zero is what we call autonomous consumption. This small letter B is what we call the marginal propensity to consume and YD is our disposable income. So that there you have it. That's the consumption function. So autonomous consumption is consumption that does not depend on disposable income. So in other words, even if your disposable income is zero, you still have this consumption that's autonomous. Now, this B times YD, this is part of consumption that depends on disposable income. So this is what we call induced consumption. So I'm going to encircle this. This whole thing here is what we call induced consumption. And again, let me repeat this. Consumption or aggregate consumption expenditure can be decomposed into two. You have this element of consumption that does not depend on disposable income. We call that autonomous. And you have the component of consumption or aggregate consumption expenditure that depends on disposable income. We call that induced consumption. All right, so here we have our consumption function, C equals C sub zero plus B Y D. Uh, from this point forward, we're going to assume the following. And this is an important assumption. We're going to assume that Yd is equal to y. Okay. So here I'm going to assume that Yd is equal to y. Now question, what is y? Y is your national income. So this guy is national income. And we know that YD is our disposable income. So what we're going to do next is we're going to graph our consumption function. So the consumption function looks like this when we are to graph it. So when, when we graph this, consumption would be on the Y axis and Y would be in our X axis. So it's going to look like this. All right, so here I have consumption in my y-axis and national income in my x-axis. So we're going to plot our consumption function. Now, if national income is zero, okay, what is going to happen with our consumption function? Remember, if national income is zero, which means you don't have this term, you're only left with 
autonomous consumption. And autonomous consumption is assumed to be positive. So it should be around here. And I will call that C sub zero. And we know that consumption increases with income. As income increases, consumption increases. So this graph should be upward sloping. And of course, I'm going to write here C equals C sub zero plus B Y. And that's our consumption function. Now, there's more to this. The slope of the consumption function is given by this small letter B. So we know that B is marginal propensity to consume. Okay, and this is the slope of the consumption function. Now, how do we derive an expression for the slope with a graph? Well, slope is defined as rise over run. So our rise would be the change in C. So in other words, if we were to look at this graph again, let's say we start here. Let's say we have, let's say y1, and we have c1. Okay, and let's say we increase our y to y2. And that should give us c2. Okay, the change in y right here. So let me call this change in y, which is your y2 minus y1. And this guy right here is our change in c, which is the difference between c2 minus c1. If we take the ratio of change in c and over change in y, that gives us the, the slope of the consumption function, which is our marginal propensity to consume. So using this graph, we can also say the following, that B is equal to change in C over change in Y, which is also our marginal propensity to consume. Okay, so rise over run give us the marginal propensity to consume. So again, let's go back to our consumption function. So I have it here graphed on this side. What we're going to do next is we're going to find the point where consumption is equal to income. So in other words, it is the point where um, the 45 degree line intersect the consumption function. So let me sketch a 45 degree line right here. So this is a 45 degree line. Now, what we're looking for is the point where our consumption function crosses the 45 degree line, right here. Well, we know that at this point right here, consumption is equal to income. How do we find this value? Well, we know that at the 45 degree line, consumption is equal to y. So all we need to do is just to do a bit of simple algebra. So C is equal to C sub zero plus B Y D. Well, we know that Y D is equal to Y. And at the 45 degree line, Y is equal to C. So all we need to do is just to sub, it, sub that in. So let's say Y is equal to C sub zero plus b y and just solve for y. And what we get is the following. y minus b y is equal to c sub zero. We factor out the y, one minus b c, c sub zero. And then we get y is equal to c sub zero over one minus b. 
So here, it's C sub 0, 1 minus B, C sub 0 over 1 minus B. This is important when we will derive the saving function uh, or later. Okay, so, so now we move on to the saving function. Well, saving by definition is part of uh, disposable income that is not consumed. So in other words, saving is equal to um, S, well, saving is S, YD minus C. So in other words, it's a part of disposable income that is not consumed. Um, so how do we derive the saving function? Well, we have uh, we, we made an assumption earlier that yd is equal to y, and we have our consumption function right here. So all we need to do is just to plug in this equation here and then solve for s. So the saving function can be derived as follows. So we have, well, we know that yd is equal to y, so it's going to be s is equal to y minus c sub 0 plus b y. So it's going to be s is equal to y minus c sub 0 minus b y or s is equal to negative c sub 0 plus 1 minus b y. So this is our saving function. Now, let us graph this along with the consumption function. All right, so this is how um, the graphs for the consumption and saving functions look like. So we, earlier we found that consumption function is upward sloping, okay? And meaning that as we increase our national income, agri-consumption increases. But also we learned that saving function is also upward sloping. Uh, why is that? Well, we're, we're gonna make an assumption now that B is between zero and one. Okay, so I'm gonna write that here. So I'm going to assume that MPC is between 0 and 1, okay? So if, if MPC is between 0 and 1, and we know that MPC is B, then 1 minus B is still between 0 and 1. So in other words, we keep this saving function upward sloping. Now, remember earlier when I graphed the intersection of the consumption function in the 45 degree line, well, that will play a role in this graph. Why is that? Um, at the point where the saving function crosses the x-axis, that is uh, the, the, the level of national income where saving is zero. So in other words, at this point right here, saving is zero. Now, when saving is zero, remember our definition here? When saving is zero, imagine this is zero, then disposable income equals consumption. And that's exactly the 45 degree line that I was referring to earlier. When the 45 degree line intersect the consumption function right here, we know that y is equal to c. And if y is equal, remember, we made the assumption earlier that yd is equal to y. Right. So if y equals to c, then obviously saving is 0. And this is where we have c sub 0 over 1 minus b, c sub 0 over 1 minus b. So again, just to summarize, 45 degree line intersects the consumption function. That is where saving is 0. 
And that is also where the saving function crosses the x-axis right here. That is when, that is, so c sub 0 over 1 minus b is the level of national income that will give us saving of 0. So, and that concludes our video today on consumption and saving function. In the next video, I'm going to give a numerical example. See you soon, and thank you.